Well, good morning and uh, welcome again to IUC People. I'm pleased to be joined by Kumazani Maloya and uh, welcome and thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure to be here, Russell. Yeah. So, Kumazani, uh, tell us a little bit more about yourself and go back right to the start. You know, where were you born and tell us about your family and where you grew up. Sure. Um, <clears throat> I come from the province of Limbopa. Mm. Uh, specifically in Bendon, that's where we spawn. Where in Bendon? Um, in a small town called Toyamo. Mm. Yeah. Which is right next to the University of Bendon. That, that is correct. That is correct. That's okay. Yeah. Cool. And were you, were you in, in the, the village, were you in the, the town parts? Or? I was in the village parts. Uh, a small little village called Angola. Just about 10 kilometers maybe out of the city of the town of Bendon. Okay. And tell us a little bit about your family. <clears throat> um, I would say I grew up in a largest family, uh, five children. Uh, okay. Five children and uh, both parents? Uh, both parents. Together. And uh, where are you in the hierarchy of five children? I am the youngest. You have a baby? <laughs> okay. Yeah. And boys and girls? Uh, it's just two boys and three girls. Okay. And so, tell us about what life was like growing up and where you went to school. Well, I have to say, maybe being the youngest, I was a little bit more privileged, if I can put it that way. Um, my parents had a lot of experience raising my siblings, so growing up was not too much of a challenge for me. Um, I went through basic school education at a local Christian school, um, went to the same school for the entirety of my basic education. Okay, so you, would, you did primary and secondary school in the same school? That's correct. Okay, that's correct. Okay, and were your parents working? My parents were all working. Uh, my dad was a professor lecturer at the University of Bandon, uh -huh. and my mom was a, a primary school teacher. Okay, and so you, you were in an academic environment right from the start? I so would say something <laughs> like that. What was your father a professor in? Um, in linguistics, specifically Chicago. Okay. So, and were you brought up speaking different languages as well? Well, I would say Chicago was the main language, uh, mm -hmm. but because I was exposed to the school that I was going to, we had English as the primary um, mm -hmm. language of communication, and we had our accounts as a second language to day one. Okay. And so, what kind of a what kind of a child were you? What what kind of personality would you? How would you describe yourself? Well, I would say I was just like any other kid, you know, growing up. You just do life as it comes. Uh, being thrown at you, uh, very bubbly. Um, I took every school challenge that came my way. I would participate in debates. So I was one of those that was always out there doing my thing involved in sports, playing around in the playground, so yeah. Okay, were you into sport as a kid? Absolutely, absolutely. Which, which kind uh, of sport? I did short distances, uh, so I jumped, uh, even almost. Uh, <laughs> I had some football, but then I played in cricket. Okay. Yes. And uh, were you a keen student? I mean, were you always uh, someone who took their studies seriously? Uh, you know, with your father as a professor, was that something you felt pressure to do or was it something you enjoyed anyway? I wouldn't really say there wasn't any pressure for me to, to focus on education. I think it just came naturally for me. Um, so I, I was a good student, I, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I went through my grades perfectly. So, yeah. Okay. So, and as you were going through school, did you have a sense of what you wanted to do with your life and where you wanted to go. Absolutely not. I think that is one of the challenges that we face as a youth. Uh, you, have, you have ideas that you want to do, but I think for me it was always changing every single time. You know, in the lower grades, you always have the ambitions to be a doctor, a policeman, whatever the case may be. But as you grow, you start realizing that there's other avenues and you just change every now and then. But still, uh, there isn't really a straight direction as to what what I wanted to do at the time, or specifically what I wanted to do at the time. So, so <clears throat> when you 
finished school, uh, what happened then? And did you do well in your matric? And uh, you know what happened after that? I I definitely did okay in my matric. I, I qualified to go straight for university and do a degree I don't know. Um, but at the time, because I was still focused in my hobbies and things like that, one of which was computer sciences, I decided to go study uh, IT and computer science. Okay, yeah. so you're a bit of a computer nerd as a kid. I would say. <laughs> All right, so you decided to go and study computer science, and where, where, did, you, where did you study? Um, I studied at a college called CGI College, um, that was for BSc in computer science. I did it for a year now. And where is it? That was in Pretoria. Okay. So was it a bit, was it a big move for you leaving? Uh, like, had, had you spent your whole life in Zealand up until like four? I would say I would say it was a big move. Uh, although I must say, during my high school time, I did have a scholarship where I went to study for six months in Australia. In Australia? Oh, well, <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> so where in Australia was? I was in Perth. In Perth. Okay. And how was that? It was a good. It was a great experience. Uh, I won't lie. Um, the, the education system is definitely different from here. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was some good exposure. Uh, I had a bit of different cultures there, but yeah, I found it very nice. Well, that's, uh, that must have been, Perth is quite a different environment to Tiando, I'm sure. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, so from Tiando to Pretoria to study computer engineering? To study computer sciences. Um, well, I think maybe there wasn't too much motivation for me. It did work out well. Um, I, I, I kind of believe in hindsight that it was also because he was motivated by a hobby as opposed to something that was career driven in a way. Mm. So then I dropped that. So when you say it didn't work out well, it's like you didn't enjoy it or? Absolutely did not enjoy it. Uh, there wasn't much motivation for me to actually do the study. So mm. yeah, I, I didn't have the drive for it. Okay. Uh, so. And where were you living in Pretoria? Were you living in, in res or were you with friends or? I was renting. Uh, in a flat with a couple of churchmen that we okay. to church together. Okay, all right. And was church part of your experience growing up? Absolutely. Uh, we were in a Christian family. Church was always mandatory. Every Sunday, you need to get up and go to church. Uh, what kind of church? Uh, the Reformed Church. Okay. Yes. And were you very involved in the church? Um, I would say initially not very much. I think. Only when I moved into my mid teens, that's where I started getting involved, um, looking up at the younglings, doing their Sunday schooling, and then eventually I took over some of the music responsibilities, being a choir master, and also some secretarial work for the church companies. Okay. So, was music always uh, an interest of yours growing up? Uh, some of the IUC people would have seen you, 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 you singing. Uh, uh, being part of their online services and, and now the face-to-face the, the, you know, -face -face services uh, was musical, was always an interest of yours. Absolutely. Uh, well, not really an interest. I grew up in a musical family where everybody was singing, whether you were working, whether you were teaming, whatever the case may be, there would have to be some musical element there. So uh, being raised up in that environment, I, I also just uh, went along with it. So, mm -hmm. you know, music has always been a part of my life. And what, and what form did that take? Uh, singing? Did you study music? Uh, um, there wasn't really too much studies invested, not for me anyway. Uh, my other siblings did do studies on that, but for me it was just whenever my family was involved in a musical project, I would just be part of it. Mm -hmm. It was mostly singing for me and a bit of instruments every now and then, but I didn't take that for, but for me voice was the main thing. Okay, okay. So you're in Pretoria doing computer science, not really where you want to be, not what you want to study, you drop out, what happens then? Then I took a gap period uh, because I dropped out uh, in the middle of the year, so it was my second year going, and then I took that six months off uh, mm -hmm. to go find myself, I did a few things, did my driver's license, a bit of traveling between my siblings, wherever they were, uh, yeah, I've seen a few places. Uh, I was fortunate enough to have parents that had the resources to, to support things like that. And then during that period, that's where I decided, you know what, maybe I should do something different, something that is not maybe aligned with what I like to do, is just give myself a different challenge. Um, I had a chat with my brother and he said, hey, why don't you do 
law economics uh, and then I took the former. Okay. So I got went back to study. So you you managed to qualify to study was it LLB? Yes, that's correct. And where did you do that? I did that back home at the University of Edinburgh. Okay. Right. And that's a what a four year degree? That's correct. And how did you find that? Yeah, I was definitely uh, doing something that I, 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 it was way out of my depth, I must say, at the beginning, but uh, it was a challenge that I was looking to, 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 to take on. And it had its ups and downs. There were certain uh, modules that I was really liking and some that I just couldn't stand, but I felt that this is something that I want to take on and I went on with it. So you managed to complete the, the degree? That's correct. And how was the experience being at the university? Did you enjoy it? Well, my my university experience was very laid back, I have to say. I was staying at home, so I would just go to school for the studies and the classes and maybe the library. Um, I'm one person as much as it, it, it is hard to believe I, I like to, I'm, I'm an introvert in a way. Uh, so I like to just keep my small circle of people, if any. Uh, so yeah, I was just been going to school, coming back, and yeah, doing my thing at home. But yeah, the, the, the school experience itself was, it was, it, was fun. it was fun. And I mean, during the studies, did you get a sense that, yes, this is the, the vocation, the career for me, or, you know, was it just the challenge of completing the studies? I mean, was it part of you thought, no, actually, I really like this, this, this is where I want to, you know, see my life heading? I think, I think I started developing the character of being a public servant, and I felt that the, the law degree gave me those opportunities, you know, especially coming from a community where uh, people are not really knowledgeable in terms of the things around them, especially legal things as uh, one was to go that far. So I, I, I felt that this might be an opportunity for me to get involved in, in community building and in being public sector in a way. So it definitely drove me uh, to actually work further in my studies. Uh, but which specific route of the legal opportunity I was going to take uh, one point I thought it would be practice, maybe a government office, uh, but yeah, there was some sort of movement towards uh, servicing people. Okay, and where do you think that came from? I grew up in a family where my parents would uh, take on a lot of people to support and help them. So I think I drew from that. It was, it, it was something that always interested me as to how my parents were able to assist people that needed some financial help or some some sort of support, you know, to get through in life. So that definitely was something that I, I might have inherited from my parents and I felt that that is what I would also like to do. Okay, and do you think faith would have played a part in that sort of motivation as well? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, you, you grow up in a, in a Christian family going to church and of course one of the themes that you get from there is to be helpful and to help others and to help one another. Uh, help your neighbor as you would help yourself. So, definitely, uh, that has to be part of it. Okay. So, you managed to complete your, your LLB at University of Venda, and then I guess it's time to think I need to get a job. Absolutely. So, what happened then? Well, I think after my completion, I, I had a choice of do I go straight into working and looking for a job, or do I continue with other studies? Mm -hmm. um, I decided to go the route of doing my practical legal training, which is just a course to give you a step up towards your practice as an attorney. Uh, so I went and did that, a six months course where you are fully focused doing legal practice work. It's like a fast track to articles, is it? Absolutely, absolutely. So it cuts to articles by, by year. Normally you're supposed to do it for two years, but yeah. And where did you do that? I did that in the city of Dubai. Okay. Yes. Okay. Still staying in Polokwane. Still staying in Polokwane. But you had to leave home and, and, and live in Polokwane for, for six months. That's correct. Okay. And how was that? It was. It was. It was, it was a funny experience. Uh, once again, you're not at home. You get to figure out life uh, on your own. Uh, fortunately, we went there with a bunch of our classmates from my LLB uh, school. So yeah, it was it was just basically a continuation of university, but this time being a little bit more independent. And, and having to worry about, you know, what are you going to eat, uh, how are you going to get to school, uh, and still managing to focus on your classes because those were very stringent classes and you couldn't afford to miss a day. Uh, mm -hmm. Otherwise, you probably have to repeat the course. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. 
So um, we, we complete uh, the practicals and then what? And then there was initially no plan. At the time I thought, you know what, I've been studying for this time and I just did the six course heavy, heavy course, six months heavy course. I thought to myself, you know what, I want a break. I just want to take some time out and, and figure things out and then I'll decide what to do. Uh, but again, with the persuasion of my brother, he said, look, why if someone wants to get you an opportunity, would you jump on it? I said, well, articles are hard to come by. If they were to come for me that easy, then I would not waste that opportunity. Um, that's where he mentioned a, my former colleague who gave me my articles opportunity and said, look, try this guy out and find out whether there's an opportunity for doing articles uh, here in Cape Town and I will look up to him and that was that was it. I took a short and that was the first step towards my articles. So that's what brought you to Cape Town to, to do your articles. And the brother you refer to is that Ruzani. That's correct. Who is known to, to us well in this church here. Yes. Okay. So that's a big move. I mean, well, you, you've been in Perth for six months, but otherwise all, all entirely in well, no, that's not true, in Popo and Pretoria. So I guess you had some experience of, of living home and living away, but uh, was that a big decision for you to come to Cape Town? I have to say it was a big decision. Um, one, because I would definitely be moving for a long term this time around. It wasn't just six months of uh, uh, scholarship or six months of PLT. Mm -hmm. It would be some sort of direction whether you're going to make this your new home or you're just going to go there and do your articles for a very long time. It's still going to be here. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, it was, it was an opportunity to actually spend some time with my brother who growing up was not really, I didn't have his presence. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, it was definitely a big move. So when you came here, were you staying with Ruzani or did you stay alone? I've been staying with Ruzani since I, I came to Cape Town. So you're still staying with Ruzani? Okay. <laughs> so the big brother is here. <laughs> uh, under his wings. Yes. Okay. So how was that? I mean, firstly, how, how did you find articles and how did you secondly find, you know, living in Cape Town? Um, articles was definitely a, a new ball game on its own. Uh, it's different from the studies. Uh, I think nothing can prepare you for the work environment. I, I've learned that, well, especially in the law field, when you're doing everything theoretically, you think uh, you have the answers, but when you do things practically, it's a different ball game. You need to engage with people's emotions. You need to understand procedures and processes and directives of the different institutions that you're dealing with. So it was definitely quite a huge challenge. Um, I, I, I think I have always mentioned it that the articles are not the most fun thing to do, uh, but it is it's a rite of passage that one has to go through. And with every rite of passage, there's going to be challenges, but we need to, to mount those challenges. Mm. As for moving to Cape Town, it, it is a different culture completely. Mm. Uh, it's, got, it's got its own cultural uh, way of doing things in life. So it has been an adjustment. I still wouldn't say I call it home yet. Uh, even though it's been quite a long time. How long have you been here now? Uh, five years. Five years, so completed articles. And are you still working with the same firm you did your articles with? So I did my articles there for a year and a couple of months, it should just been a year, but I decided to wait for all my other colleagues that started articles before, me, so we can all get at me at the same time. So I, I did that. And once that was done, the firm that I was working with then decided to absorb me and make me an associate of the firm. Um, and I went there until just late 2020, uh, and then I moved on to putting in the challenge, which I think this is. Okay, so just took on a new job this year? Yes. Okay, and what kind of law are you doing? I am more of a property uh, law attorney. Uh, I work as mainly on conveyance and works. Um, I do a bit of family law as well and some estate planning, but mm. uh, property law is my, is my main focus. And do you think you found what you want to do? Are you enjoying it? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I have to say, uh, when you read your articles, I think there's still a, an element of not knowing what you want to do, but articles give you an opportunity to, to, to experience all these fields of law. And I'm very grateful for the law firm that I went on because it was a small medium firm. You basically run around doing everything that everyone throws at you. So it exposed me to all these different uh, levels of the law. and. I think I found my passion in property law and I've not looked back since. Okay. And you said, you know, Cape Town doesn't quite feel like home yet, but 
you've just taken on a new job in Cape Town, so one would assume you're here for a bit longer. Uh, I mean, do you see yourself staying in Cape Town, or you know, is, is there a pullback to to Limpopo at some stage? Uh, Absolutely, I have to say when I took on this new opportunity, uh, I felt at the time that I was still flexible enough to uh, to not make Cape Town my home, but uh, in the turn of the year, I was given more responsibilities, and I think those uh, technically locked me down to Cape Town. So I think for the time being, I see myself here for a foreseeable future. So I think eventually I'll have to make it home. I will eventually have to make it home. Okay. But uh, I guess it's dependent on opportunities arising at home, which might be more challenging or not. Yeah. Well, the opportunity, of course, is to be aligned with what I've now taken up as a passion, which is being the property law environment. And I think Cape Town has got much more exposure in that regard. So uh, if opportunities that are equal to what I have right now definitely do pop up, they will definitely attract me. Uh, but for now, I feel that the market Cape Town is very saturated to actually allow me to grow in that, in that field of, of, of law. So um, I don't know, I, I still think uh, it's not your home, but I will have to eventually make it home. <laughs> okay. I mean, I know some of my um, friends uh, who don't come from Cape Town and who are you know, uh, not white. Uh, will say that uh, they, they do struggle with Cape Town and that, that it's, it, it's not such an integrated city and always comfortable. I mean, how have you experienced it? Well, I must say again, I was, I was quite fortunate in my upbringing that I was exposed to different cultures. Uh, the schools that were way I worked in was multiracial. I was exposed to a lot of cultures and people. And of course, my Australian exposure as well uh, also helped me to grow up and appreciate different people and their background. So coming to Cape Town for me was not very difficult to adjust to the, to the environment. It's just the exposure to the cultures themselves. I, I am quite adaptive, so it's very easy for me to, to pick up things and, and try to adjust to them. And of course, I think with the career uh, that I've picked up, you do need to adapt very quickly to things like that. So I don't really think I've got any issues uh, with, with adaptation and the culture of Cape Town, but uh, the only reason I'm saying it's not home is just for that for that home feel, you know, uh, mm. that you grew up with. Uh, but otherwise, I, I, I can't really say I've found that many challenges. So in terms of uh, family, obviously uh, Razani and is here, but your other siblings, are they still back in Popo? Your parents back in Popo? My parents are back in Popo, uh, two of my other siblings on that side, and one is in Alteen. Okay. Right. And your involvement with IEC, I mean, I guess maybe you didn't have much of a choice coming <laughs> down here and you're, you're staying with Rosani and uh, he was bringing you along, but uh, you know, how's that been for you? Yeah, I think you're absolutely spot on. It was a matter of, hey, uh, come down here and leave out of my roof and you know, do what I do, <laughs> uh, in, in a sense. So uh, I have been to IEC when I was visiting him before, so mm. I had the experience of the church and uh, I absolutely enjoyed it. Uh, and when I came down uh, as a fixture, it just became you not, know, we just continued where we left off the last time we were here. So yeah. mm -hmm. I think RGC was, was an easy beginning. Okay. And is, is this faith been an important thing in your life? I mean, it sounds from a very early age you were involved in church, that was part of your parents. I mean, is it sort of a habit or is it something that, that, that sort of drives you and is, is, is uh, you know, something that, that shapes you as a person? Yeah, I think being, being raised up uh, in, in a family where faith was, was quite important has always been a part of, of my life as well. Um, mm -hmm. I have really rely on faith. Uh, as I mentioned, there's a lot of challenges that uh, I faced uh, and most of the time I would rely on that faith to actually guide me and, and take me through. So. Mm -hmm. Could you maybe just reflect on a couple of those challenges? I mean, what, what, what have been some of the, the, the most difficult things you've had to grapple with in your life? Well, I think for me, uh, one of the most biggest things was, was the education aspect when I decided uh, the computer science thing was not working for me um, and I decided to take on the LOB as a new challenge. Uh, failure was not an option, you know, and of course, some of the courses were giving me a hard time and you don't want to disappoint your parents and, and, 
and you sometimes just feel that things are looking bleak. But uh, I think that's where the faith was was part of it. It, it definitely drove me. I, I had to rely on God all this time. I would I would pray <laughs> about and pray and say, look, if you can just get me to across this 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 course, uh, I, I, yeah, I just need to 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 make my parents proud in a way mm. and, and and show them that I am. Somewhat serious uh, about life. Mm -hmm. Somewhat serious. <laughs> <laughs> Not too serious. <laughs> so, so yeah, um, and, and and I felt that um, again, I have been quite fortunate to have the opportunities to uh, to smoothly uh, uh, experience my life, and, and I always look back to God and I say I'm very grateful for the opportunities that you you've given me. So. I, I, I always look back at the challenges, but I always look at the opportunities that I've always had, and, and I can only contribute that to the faith of God. Mm. And so, what does the future hold for you? I mean, what are you, what are you looking forward to? Well, I think I have just decided, as I mentioned, I took on a new role recently, which has got a bit more managerial uh, management responsibilities. And it has started to show me that you know what you need to take on one day at a time. So that is my new way of doing things. It's just a matter of tackle whatever is going on and you take it one day at a time. Yes, I do plan for the future, maybe have a family um, and, and, and take it as it comes, but I am just taking it one day at a time now. Okay. And aside from work, what's what's fun for you? What's what you know? Who's who is Kumazani away from uh, property will? As I mentioned, I am I'm pretty much an introvert. Uh, hard to believe, maybe. Uh, but yeah, I, I prefer to just stay indoors. I do the outdoors every now and then, but I prefer to just stay indoors, uh, do some reading uh, on the internet, read articles. Um, I'm a huge uh, computer gamer, so I find mm -hmm. some time to play some, some, some computer games. Uh, uh, Big football fan, so sports keeps me busy mm -hmm. uh, when the games are open. So, yeah, that's where I spend most of my time. And music has always been music, so I will sit down on my computer and compose some melodies uh, for choral music, things like that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's where I spend most of my time. Okay, great. Well, thank you, Kumazan. It's been good to get to know you a bit better, and for some of your folk at AUC to also get to know you. So, thank you so much. Okay, it was a pleasure. Thank you very much.